Okay, so welcome everyone to A Course in Miracles satsang. A satsang just means talk, so I'll talk. Um, talk about truth, talk pointing to truth. So my words are not truth. They're just, my words are sounds out of mouths. It's just sounds coming out of this vehicle. Uh, but what happens is your mind's a receiver and you'll be receiving and it's like the, the, the words, the body's use of words is now being used by the Holy Spirit to wake us up from the dream we're dreaming. So, um, so these, the, everything here can be given a new purpose for the Holy Spirit to use to waken us to our true self. Our true self is just this infinite love. This happy mind, this tranquility, this peace, peace of God. It's who we are. It's really, once you get back to the peace of God, you realise that this is who you are. You realise that there's this effortlessness, this ease, ease and grace. Um, and it absolutely feels, it is home, but it, it just feels so easy when you get here but to catch to get back we have to do we're caught in this dream we're caught so we're so convinced it's like we're watching a movie on a screen and we're so caught up in it that somebody tapping us on the shoulder say look away look away this is not real we're fixated on this screen called the world What's, what's going on? We feel ourselves to be touching. We're like, this is me. I'm touching me. This is, you know, this is who I am. I can feel this. And this is all a big ruse. It's, 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 it's all false. So very, very gently, we're led back. Very gently, we let go. We don't have to do it fast. There's no pressure. There's no demand. If the ego is demanding you, you know, it's telling you're failing, whatever, just say, oh, I've got plenty of time. Jesus and the Holy Spirit aren't in a rush for me to awaken. They, they know. And the thing is that all this forgiveness that we're doing, all this whole thing, all the years that I went through crying and being in the ego and depressed and anxious and doing all the forgiveness and working with the Holy Spirit and Jesus that was all in the script as well it's all scripted that's what he says even your forgiveness is scripted the times you forgive is in the script and the times you don't forgive is in the script there's billions of scripts they're all written there's you know choose your own adventure choose your own script but why wouldn't you choose the, the, the script that gets you closer to happiness? So that's really, but it doesn't matter if you choose to condemn your brother rather than overlook and see that nothing has happened. If you choose to condemn, all you've done is chosen to be, to experience pain and suffering but really, even that pain and suffering is an illusion because the Son of God could never be in pain or suffer because he never left his home. So even that's an illusion, pain and suffering. It feels very real at the time. But when you awaken, you realise that that's all gone. That's nothing. That's like a puff of nothingness. There's no story left. You're free. So the people, the, the minds that become free, like myself, there's nothing wrong with saying you're free. Jesus wants you to. He wants you to say you're free. He wants you to bring people into your, when I say people, he wants to bring others into your peace. He wants to offer another way. He says, I need your, your mouth, your hands, your feet. I need you to help others choose differently and the more um, that we do this forgiveness the more we look at the world and we say this is a silly dream this couldn't be real because God has no opposite 
God is love. And this world is the total opposite to infinite, unconditional, eternal love. Everything here is changes. And when we're stuck in a dream, we need help to get out of it, to say it's a silly dream, to know I am not a body. I am free. I am the mind of God. I, I never left my source. Ideas do not leave their source. I am an idea in the mind of God. I'm a thought. I'm a living happiness in the mind of God. That's what I like to say, because you might think, oh, an idea in the mind of God, that doesn't sound very amazing. <laughs> what about if I'm the joy of joy? What if I'm, you know, the happiness living in the happiness? What if I'm this infinite peace in the infinite peacefulness of God? That's that's beautiful. So you might have holy instances as you go along where you feel this expansion, where you feel something coming, something that's very different to your experience of the world. And that's just pointing us. Um, that, that, that's pointing us to this will be your experience 24-7 in the end. So you're living, so the, the end result is that you know, there's no time or space, but, you, but you're using time and space. So I usually give this sort of, I feel like I'm giving the same little spiel each week, something like that, just talking. It's really to encourage you, to motivate you, because that's what Jesus is trying to do. He's trying to motivate us to why would we want to practice forgiveness? Why would we want to see the face of Christ in anyone we're looking at and, and looking as guilty. And one thing we can't see is the guilt in us is being projected. But that starts to be revealed, that start of the mind. If you have an experience that the guilt you're seeing in others is your guilt, that's your mind waking up. That is a really starting to see, oh, yes, I'm really seeing the guilt that I think I'm guilty of, I'm now seeing it. That's what I started to see. I started to see. It's you see the ego. You're starting to really look from this observer, the decision maker, and starting to see what the ego's doing. So you're looking at the ego thoughts. You're not caught up in them. And this is how we awaken. This is how we become free. Awakening is just free, being free of this little silly little ego mind. I mean, we really, it's just, you know, we forgot to laugh at the silly little ego, right? And, and you do, you end up laughing. I remember towards the end of the journey, you know, in the six months prior to my awakening experience, I was just laughing at what the ego, because it was the ego was still in my mind. And it was just wanting to drag me back to these old stories that I'd done a lot of forgiveness around the Holy Spirit and Jesus had shown me that they were all rubbish. And so, you know, this is really a, a quite, a, you need to be quite dedicated to this teaching, this path. You, it does take a lot of dedication. And that's when you really, you really start to see the benefits. And that's why you want to be dedicated. You can still have your life. You can still enjoy all the things you like to do. You don't really have to give up anything. You know, if you like to go swimming or you like to go to the gym or you like to garden or do craft work or play golf or play tennis, you can do, you don't have to give up anything. You just do it with forgiveness. It's the happy dream in the end. You're going to be doing something. The body's going to be moving around doing something, right? But the mind that's going with it is just going to be loving everyone. It's going to see the holiness of everyone and everything. It's going to see the holiness of God because the mind's back, joined into the holiness, eternal, infinite love of God. So today, I just want to give a little talk a little something about this forgiveness to destroy that with this is week three of the song of prayer uh so i don't particularly like uh going through 
sections of the course where it talks about the ego and what it's like. And I said to Jesus, like, can I skip over this week? <laughs> uh, and he said, no. <laughs> um, so, and I'll tell you why, because I, I just like to just live it, you know, just have no thought of the ego. I don't even want to talk about the ego. I acknowledge it. It's just such a, a silly little thing. But the thing is that he said no it, this is um helpful so he's given me some tips on how to expand on some of these sections so we're going to be going in through this section today so it's be a be a while like we read through last week shannon will read um a paragraph along with me and then we've got a really nice little meditation at the end so stay around for that Okay, here we go. We're going to be going through all the ways the ego judges and uses different ways to think it's doing forgiveness. Right? <laughs> Jesus is giving us all the little ways so we can see where we're like that. So forgiveness to destroy has many forms being a weapon of the world of form. So the forgiveness to destroy is a weapon in this world of form. Not all of them are obvious and some are carefully concealed. So it's really good when we get to the carefully concealed ones, we can really start to notice. Because one of the things about if you want to be free, you have to be really honest about what you're doing. You're not guilty of doing it. But you need to be honest so you can bring it to the Holy Spirit. So you can decide, you can choose against it. So not all of them are obvious and some are carefully concealed beneath what seems like charity. Yet all the forms that it may seem to, to have, sorry, yet all the forms that it may seem to take have but this single goal. Their purpose is to separate and make what God created equal. It tries to make it different. So that's what we, the single goal the ego has is to make different. The difference is clear in several forms where the designed comparisons, comparison cannot be missed nor is it really meant to be. So some, some of the particular um, egoic forms of forgiveness, I'm just going to call it ego forgiveness rather than forgiveness to destroy, but just it means the same thing, right? So the way the ego forgives, um, it has several different forms and um the designed comparison cannot be missed, nor is it really meant to be. So you're not really meant to miss the comparison. So when the ego does forgiveness, it wants to let everybody know um, about it, that it's doing this forgiveness, okay? So just we'll go on and it'll become clear why he's giving us that message. So in paragraph two, in this group, the first group, there are the forms in which a better, like the way he puts the apostrophe marks, quotation marks, there are, there are the forms in which a better person deigns to stoop to save a baser one, a baser person from what he truly is. So, um, that word deigns, I uh, looked it up in the dictionary and it says to do something that one considers to beneath one's dignity. So forgiveness here rests on an attitude of gracious lordiness so far from love that arrogance could never be dislodged. Who can forgive 
and yet despise? And who can tell another he is steeped in sin and yet perceive him as the son of God? Who makes a slave to teach what freedom is? There is no union here, but only grief. This is not really mercy. This is death. Now, let's have a look at this a little bit deeper. This is the sort of, we probably know, I mean, these are all egoic ways and we've all done it. We've all done all of this. I have too in this being in the ego where we think we're the better person and we stoop down to save someone what we call a baser so you know we look at them as lower down as us so we're sort of up high and we make a big uh, gesture we're very overt about how we're forgiving them we're forgiving that person and oh I'm not going to you know do this I'm not going to uh, make them pay no I'm just gonna going to um, uh, let it go so we sort of you know they're so they're so um, lower down you know it might be I probably did it a lot around my daughter when she was you know using drugs so I was probably doing a lot of that at the time so you know I'm up here and I'm going to do this forgiveness but no I was not never seeing a holiness at that stage I was um I we all do it and we do because we've all got the same ego right so it's not bad to do this we just we're caught up in the ego we can't help but do it so all we have to do is notice when we do it. Now, we may may not do this a lot, um, but this is um, one form of um, forgiveness to destroy, egoic forgiveness. Um, so, and who can tell another he is steeped in sin? So we talk a lot about the sin of others. We talk about what they're doing wrong and how wrong they are and how guilty they are. There is no union here, but only grief. So we can really feel when we've done these sort of, when we've talked in this way or thought in this way, there is only grief. That, that we can certainly know. There is grief. This is not really mercy. This is death. So one thing about when he says this is death, death is depression anxiety, illness, sadness, frustration, anger. It doesn't, death, death is are those things and life is happiness and joy and peace. So those are the way he uses the word death and life in the course. Uh, so Shannon, I'll just get you to read the next section. Thank you. Thank you. Another form, still very like the first, if it is understood, does not appear in quite such blatant arrogance. The one who would forgive the other does not claim to be the better. Now he says instead that here is one whose sinfulness he shares, since both have been unworthy and deserve the retribution of the wrath of God. This can appear to be a humble thought and may indeed induce a rivalry in sinfulness and guilt. It is not love for God's creation and the holiness that is his gift forever. Can his son condemn himself and still remember him? Um. Shannon, when you read, if you feel any comments coming through, you just you're welcome to can't let them be said. So I'll just um, share a little bit about um, this section that Shannon's read. It's really when it's really 
I think a, this sort of points more to um, maybe religious, where people are very religious and uh, where they um, so now he says instead that here is one whose sinfulness he shares and just I noticed I haven't been in many churches since I was a child but I did go to a couple of churches about four years ago I went to church with a friend um I went about maybe six times and there was this sort of idea of shared sinfulness um that's the only time I can ever remember there where it says you know you have to say that you're sinful which I couldn't say at that time <laughs> so, um and so there's there's um this rivalry and sinfulness in other words no I'm more sinful than you <laughs> um and so that that's not anything that gets you to the joy and the truth about yourself right so if you've been in any organization where it's all about admitting your sinfulness and joining in the sinfulness and can Jesus wash away your sins well he already has done he's already said you are sinless right so so I don't know, but that's what's coming through at the moment. Um, so this this is another way that doesn't work. He says, it, one of the things that is really, it, his message is, as we read through this, is you're not guilty if you've been in any of these groups and or been like this or done this yourself. You are not guilty. Remember, it's ju we're just mistaken. We've just forgotten. He says to me, it's like forgetting a doctor's appointment. You've just forgotten something. You've gone in and done something. It's literally, it's so minute, these errors we're making in thinking. But we have to know about them to choose again. So it's to choose again without any guilt about them thinking oh I you know I was in a church for 10 years I was telling everyone they were sinful oh no he says forget about that don't worry about it just notice that that doesn't get you to God's mind so now you can choose again uh, here the goal is to separate from God the son he loves and keep him from his source this goal is also sought by those who seek the, ro the role of martyr at, another hand, at another's hand. Here must the aim be, seen, be clearly seen. So he wants us to really cl clearly see um, what our aim is when we, become, when we act like a martyr. <clears throat> For this may pass as meekness and as charity instead of cruelty. I just want you to just take that in because I've all done it. I've done it too, so, right? We think we're being meek and holier than thou and I'm just doing my Course in Miracles, you know, forgiveness, and but it's not, right? It's not. We're trying to do it, but we're getting a little bit mixed up. Is it not kind to be accepting of another spite? This is the this is the egos, right? So we're we're using this sort of, um, you know, this holier than thou, this martyr. I'll just put up with this because I'll look like I'm really forgiving and I'm really in God's mind and I'm really doing. I'm really being loving. And this is what he's saying, the ego is saying, is it not kind to be accepting of another spite and not respond except with silence and a gentle smile? Behold, how good are you who bear with patience and with saintliness the anger and the hurt another gives and do not show the bitter pain you feel. 
This is all uh, egoic forgiveness. We're trying to do that. We're trying to put up with something and, and swallow it and feel this resentment and this annoyance and frustration. But we put it on. We let it try to pass as meekness and charity. But it's not true forgiveness. It's not. We're, we're trying to be loving and kind, but it doesn't, it doesn't work because if we feel any bitter pain or resentment or annoyance um, and we're trying to be patient and saintly, it doesn't work. So there's a really good thing the, in a way this is a you know really good teaching because it it can show us he's he can show us that we don't need to do this there's a remedy that really does work and it it takes away all this we don't need to do any of this forgiveness oh Shannon I'll get you to read that next bit please you know Kate that that one the one that he's talking about in this paragraph reminds me of um pretending to be spiritual and and then we have this like we have to we put on a smile I did it put on a smile but underneath there's all of this anger and things going on and and I recognized that error and what happened was that I was pushing it down so I wasn't looking at my true feelings because oh I was spiritual <laughs> You know, and so I feel like that kind of fits in with this one that he's talking about, too. Forgiveness to destroy will often hide behind a cloak like this. It shows the face of suffering and pain in silent proof of guilt and of the ravages of sin. Such is the witness that it offers one who could be savior, not an enemy. But having been made enemy, he must accept the guilt and heavy laid reproach that thus is put upon him. Is this love? Or is it rather treachery to one who needs salvation from the pain of guilt? What could the purpose be except to keep the witnesses of guilt away from love? Forgiveness to destroy can also take the form of bargaining and compromise. I will forgive you if you meet my needs, for in your slavery is my release. Say this to anyone and you are slave. And you will seek to rid yourself of guilt in further bargains which can which can give no hope, but only greater pain and misery. How fearful has forgiveness now become and how distorted is the end it seeks. Have mercy on yourself who bargains thus. God gives and does not ask for recompense. There is no giving but to give like him. All else is mockery. For who would try to strike a bargain with the Son of God and thank his Father for his holiness? So this, this section sort of reminds me um, all about the um, special relationships, you know, where we, um, where we, where we really, um, you know, this, uh, this is all tied up in the special relationships, the grievance, you know, if only you would do this, I would be happy. So I will forgive you if you meet my needs, for in your slavery is my release. This is the ego's um, bargaining and compromise. Remember, the ego seeks for happiness and is trying to get it uh, through getting someone else to change. The ego never says peace and happiness is within. <laughs> so if we, if we um, ask some, someone to change, to meet our needs, 
we are the slave because what's going to happen is that the ego is going to be irritated with everything. Have you ever had a relationship where someone really tries to please you all the time and the ego is never satisfied? I, I had one relationship years and years ago where someone just tried to please me all the time and I can remember thinking it doesn't matter what he does, I'm annoyed with him. <laughs> And so I wasn't free. My mind wasn't free. I was a slave to the annoyance because I was um, really saying him to him, if you meet my needs. And of course, he was playing his part saying, if I meet your needs, um, you'll be happy. You know, that old saying, you know, happy wife, happy life. Well, good luck with that, right? Because Jesus throws a big bomb in the water here and says, no, happy within, happy life. <laughs> so let's, let's just give up trying to get anyone to do anything. Let's just stop trying to get the characters in the dream to bend over backwards to make us happy because that is a, we're our slave. We are then if they, if they do something that annoys us, we're waiting on them and like, I'd, you know, I like my carrots chopped this way and they chop the carrots another way. <laughs> I'll say, oh, I'm annoyed. And you start to see our mind is just taken away. It's like it blows around like the wind. We've got, we've just caught up in this, you know, we're just taken. Our mind's just all over the place. There's no peace and happiness ever when we're waiting on a character do to do what the mind says so the ego has set up this I want it thus remember Jesus says the ego always shrieks I want it thus <laughs> and then the other the other character is trying to do the right thing or resisting everything you want every time you say I want it done this way they'll purposely they oh yes love I'll do it that way and purposely muck it up there's a whole lot of stuff going on in egoic relationships and we, you know, we can touch on it here and hopefully laugh about it, right? Notice where we're doing it because the one thing about it, this is we have to see where we're doing this. We're all doing it because it's the same ego mind. I've got the same ego mind I did have as, um, as everyone, right? But there's no private thoughts. The private thoughts of the ego are in all minds. It's one ego mind. It's like we're all drinking from the same well of ego thoughts, right? So it can really be helpful to realise that we're all drinking, we're all feeding from the one ego thought system. We all have it. You don't have a different or separate or worse ego than my ego. It's all ego it's like it's the same radio station broadcasting in all our minds every single the billions and billions look like in separate minds but we're all walking around seemingly in these little bodies but we're all drinking from the same well of the same thought system we're all doing it you can really see it just just get out and start speaking to people and you're just like oh yeah I have all those same thoughts. I just projected onto this character or this, my car or my job or the plants in my garden or the trees in the street that I don't want chopped down. Or, you know. It doesn't matter what they're saying. Notice, notice that they're, whatever they're saying, you've got the same thoughts. We all do. And so this is really helpful to see. And so the... The one mind, the one ego mind that they're all drinking from, the same well of thoughts, we're all, it's broadcasting into all minds and we call it my thoughts. So I say to myself, oh, I've got my own Kate thoughts. All these thoughts are about me. And Shannon's like, oh, these thoughts are all about me. And they're all the same thoughts, right? Oh, you're guilty. You're sinful. You're bad. 
you mucked up there. You didn't do that. You're so unloving. You're so unkind. <laughs> I've talked to so many people over the years and a lot of them try to convince me about how bad their ego is. I'm like, ah, it's the one ego. All your thoughts that you've had, everyone's thoughts. I've had the same thoughts. Because you can't, if you're drinking from the same well, you can't drink a bit of water and say, oh, my water's really bad. What's your water like? They're drinking the same water. It's all the same. Same thoughts. That's why Jesus can write these, write a book, and we're all relating to it because it's all the same ego. That's why we all like her. So it's a really important part for us to know that, that we're all doing this. You can't say, oh, I didn't do that. I just, I didn't do, ever do that bit. I don't want to, I don't want anyone to think that I would be lordy or lordy, lordy. I couldn't be like that. Well, you are. And it's not you. They're thoughts. They're that you're, it's like you're saying, oh, this little bit of water I didn't drink. You're not guilty for having this. The ego mind is not you. That's why he wants us to choose against this. It's not you, these thoughts, these lordy, lordy thoughts. They're not you. They're just thoughts that we had and we acted on them and we did that and we said that and, we, and then we come to all of a sudden further down the track, we see nothing happened because God has no opposite. So anything we've ever said or done or been lordy, lordy, or, you know, I'm like, oh, I want to overlook that part that Kate just read because I feel so guilty. Gosh, I did that for years. No, forget about the guilt. We're all doing it. Everyone's done it. And we're not guilty for it because God is love and we never left that love. So anything we're doing here, he's telling us we're all caught in a dream of separation and the dream never happened so anything we did in this lifetime never happened so we're going through the, this zoom group today we experience as if it happened and we're learning and it's part of the way to wake up but it never happened it's not happening now all that's happening is the mind that is asleep is getting a message through this zoom group so it's a one-edged sword. Its purpose is to wake us up to the truth. Um, now I've forgotten where I am. <laughs> I think it's for you to read, Sh Shannon. Yeah, I think I think we're on seven. I think I'm reading paragraph seven. Yeah, number seven. Okay. Yeah. I do want to share, though, that when you were talking, it was so perfect because that whole nothing is personal. I was guided one time. I actually just saw in my mind that all of the ego thoughts are just floating around and they're just like little things floating in the air. And it's only when I grab a hold of one and bring it and call it, this is Shannon or this is something about me that it actually you know, could, could be a, an issue for me, you know, if I just stayed behind them and just let them float by, it was, I had, I just maintained that clear mind. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. What would you show your brother? Would you try to reinforce his guilt and thus your own? Forgiveness is the means for your escape. How pitiful it is to make of it the means for further slavery and pain. Within the world of opposites, there is a way to use forgiveness for the goal of God and find the peace he offers you. Take nothing else or you have sought your death and prayed for separation from yourself. Christ is for all because he is in awe. It is his face forgiveness lets you see. It is his face in which you see your own.
Thanks, Shannon. So I'm just going to repeat that last couple of those last couple of lines, that paragraph again. First of all, take nothing else or you have sought your death. In other words, remember death is sadness, being a slave to the ego, irritated, frustrated, annoyed, depressed, anxious, tired, fatigued, ill, pain, everything. That is death. That's what Jesus means as death, right? And it is. You're dead, right? Your heart's pumping, so-called in the dream body, but you're dead. I was dead for years and years, right? I never was full of life. So, so God is life. So now I am just full of life. Am I uh, just everything? I've got so much what you would call energy. Uh, you know, I walk and I go for swims at the beach and I'm gardening and I just have no fatigue. Of course, you know, I'm tired at night and I go to bed and I sleep eight or nine hours. I'm happy. That's what I sleep. Have no guilt about anything. I just do, you know, we've all got our own little um, uh, ways. If you sleep five hours or you sleep 10 hours, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. Don't have any set ideas about set up how the body needs to be. Just work with what works for you. But um, um, death is the opposite of life. So death is depression, sadness, illness, which is what I was in, right? I was always worry, worrying about everything, which is the ego. So death is being in the ego or the, the outcome of, the, of believing in the ego's thought system. So the last paragraph is all forms forgiveness takes. Oh, sorry, I want to read that last line first. Christ is for all because he is in all. So remember Christ is in all. It is his face forgiveness lets you see. So this, these couple of lines are the answer of how, what forgive, you know, if you're thinking, well, what do I do? Like, just give it to me straight. <laughs> give me the answer now. <laughs> I've heard about all the things I shouldn't do. <laughs> oh, God. Tell me what to do. All right. He's saying Christ is in everyone you see. It is his face forgiveness lets you see. It is his face in which you see your own. So you're, you're, remember how I see you is I'm going to see myself. I'm going to experience everything I think about you. So all forms forgiveness takes that do not lead away from anger, condemnation and comparisons of any kind are death so I'm just going to read that again <clears throat> so what we've just gone through are all the different forms of forgiveness to destroy the ones where it's really overt where someone's sort of really outspoken about how forgiving they are and this lower this lower person, I'm going to do something to help them. I'm going to, you know, help this homeless person that, you know, ruined their life by choosing homelessness and that sort of thing. That lordiness all the way down to um, this sort of martyr where we put up with and put on a gentle smile. So these are all the... Um, forms different forms of forgiveness to destroy so I think there's sort of about four or five different forms he's given us so we can recognize we might do one of them we might do all of them um, so he just says all the forms of this forgiveness to destroy takes uh, that 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 if it doesn't lead away from anger condemnation and comparisons so he's what I how he gets me to read these things 
is he gets he gets me to see these particular words like anger, condemnation, and comparison. So you can really fine tune your mind and say, am I experiencing any anger when I'm with this person? Am I, do I feel like I'm condemning them? Or is there any comparisons in my mind? Am I comparing this person to myself? Um, if I am, I am going to be experiencing death, which is some sort of depression, feeling sad, um, not peaceful, not happy, and not joyful. So for that is what their purposes have set. So all these different um, different forms of forgiveness, their, their purpose is to keep you away from your true self. Be not deceived by them but lay them by as worthless in their tragic offerings. You do not want to stay in slavery. You'll be a slave to the ego. All these different ways we want to notice what we're doing and choose against them. You do not want to be afraid of God. So you want to come to God. And join with him and ask him, ask for his help. Do what you can to really help your connection with God. You want to see the sunlight and the glow of heaven shining on the face of the earth, redeemed from sin and in the love of God. From here is prayer released along with you. Your wings are free and prayer will lift you up and bring you home where God would have you be. So I'm just going to do a sort of five-minute meditation based on those words and then we'll go into another meditation where we're going to use a blessing. Now just close your eyes and I want you to just look at the world look at say a landscape a la say a landscape like maybe trees and hills or a river or a garden just just any view of the world you might even like to look at a city just let all thoughts be still just let them go Now just see the sunlight shining on it all. Just focus on the light, the sunlight. Maybe you're looking at some water and the sunlight is glistening off the water. Try to get into the glow of heaven shining on the face of the earth. This is coming from your mind. The light within is seeing the light without. So the love of God within me is looking at the sunshine and the glow of heaven on the landscape. Have a go to your favourite place, whatever it is. Just look around and look at it. Try to feel this, this lightness within. See the sunlight. Now imagine you've got these wings on your back and they open. Your wings are free. So imagine there's these beautiful big wings. Just feel everything release from your body. 
So everything relax and just these beautiful big wings are free to fly anywhere. Your body feels light. And prayer will lift you up, and bring you home. I just feel this love lifting you up. Imagine you're like a butterfly and you're just lifted up maybe by a gentle breeze of love, something warm and beautiful. As your wings are free, you're unbound. Just feel everything releasing. My wings are free. And I'd like to feel yourself flying, flying on a prayer, the words of love, flying home where God would have me be. So I've got another meditation to do as well today. <clears throat> Hope you had a lovely experience flying around, looking at the beautiful sunlight, seeing the world differently. Just, yeah, it's beautiful. 
So one of the things about true forgiveness is always reminding us about seeing our brother as sinless. He always comes back, the face of Christ. So, so many of the meditations we've done is where we, he asks us to look at our brother as he looks. So this is the Christ mind sees only holiness and he says that's that's how we want to be in relationship with our brother. So in a holy relationship, we're seeing only holiness. And holiness might be a word that um, brings together all other words like innocent, guiltless, sinless, um, the grace of God, the perfect, the perfection. So let's just use this word holiness today to cover all, you know, the whole Christ blessing, holiness. Because in holiness, there's nothing else. It's purity. It's like a pure whiteness, cleanness, um, just a, something that has no stain, nothing. It's a... It's just whole without an off. There's nothing, there's not one part of stained with sin or darkness or anything on in this holiness. So the way to be free is to have our belief. He says the only belief you need to really undo is the belief in separation. But that belief in separation is really the belief in guilt or the belief in sin. Because they're all they're all the same thing, right? So I'm going to be doing this meditation from lesson 37. Some people like to get their book and read along. If you want to, you can read along. I'll just give you a few minutes, but you don't need to. I'll be reading it and instructing us. My guidance today was to get the group to do this exactly as he does it with the daily lesson. We'll just do it together in the group. So lesson 37 is my holiness blesses the world. So I'm not going to read um, the whole lesson. I'm just going to read little bits of it. So my holiness blesses the world. This idea contains the first glimmerings of your true function in the world and why you are here. Your purpose is to see the world through your own holiness. Thus, you and the world are blessed together. Your holiness is the salvation of the world. It lets you teach the world that it is one with you, not by preaching to it, not by telling it anything, but merely by your quiet recognition that in your holiness are all things blessed along with you that's the purpose of this doing this lesson today or the forgiveness is to re so we we when we t when we think of teaching we think of these old ideas about you know, I'm the teacher and I'm going to tell you. But we're, we're not preaching to it and we're not telling anybody anything. It's literally we extend the miracle 
really through our state, our state of mind where we've realized our own holiness and our, our recognition that everything is holy. It's blessed. It is as God created it. We're seeing that. So how to get to that state? Um, he gives us something to do in this lesson. So for three minutes, I want you to just close your eyes and we're going to repeat, my holiness blesses the world. I'm going to put a timer on and we're just going to do this meditation. I'll lead you through it. We'll do three minute, um, a couple of three minute sections. So the first one is just to slowly repeat, my holiness blesses the world. Just close your eyes and repeat that to yourself for three minutes. Okay, so the next um, part of this lesson, um, we'll do two minutes of this. Look around you and apply the idea to anything you see. My holiness blesses this chair. My holiness blesses that window, 
my holiness blesses this body. So just apply it as you look around. My holiness blesses this computer. My holiness blesses this blind. My holiness blesses that tree. So I'll be quiet for a couple of minutes. Just say it as I'm saying it now. Okay, so it's so important to do this. It's, it, it is just, this is the way to have true vision. This was what I did and it really does open up true vision for you when you do these, these um, lessons, these early lessons. They do lead you to true vision. So if you think you're looking around and you're saying, I'm not feeling it, don't worry. It's like it'll it'll come. You'll see it. Just keep doing it as he's asking us to do it. Then close your eyes and apply the idea to any person who occurs to you using his name and saying, my holiness blesses you, and then insert their name. So I'd like you to um, try to go through your family. Your, your dad, your mum, brothers and sisters, um, go through um, your spouse, your partner, your children, your friends, your co-workers, uh, the people in your course community, any course teachers. Um, so... This will be, I'm going to do maybe, yeah, three minutes of this. So you only have to have their face in your mind and say, my holiness blesses you and then say their name and then move on to the next one. So try not to exclude anyone. But that's what I would like you to do is just bring your family, your friends, everyone, your neighbours, anyone you know, think of. Let's include everyone, don't exclude anyone. Here we go.
Okay, so we're going to end today's application. So repeat the idea with your eyes closed. My holiness blesses the world. And then open your eyes. Look around you and say, my holiness blesses the world. So it is particularly helpful to apply it silently to anyone you meet, using his name as you do it. It is essential to use the idea, if anyone seems to cause an adverse reaction in you, offer him the blessing of your holiness immediately, that you may learn to keep it in your own awareness. So I know most of you are in the evening, going to bed, maybe in a few hours. So if you are with people living with people or I know in Australia it's, it's uh, early afternoon, you could do this lesson tomorrow if you like. Again, read through it, do it for yourself and then spend the whole day where, where, wherever you are, whoever you're with, uh, apply it silently in your mind. So, you know, if you're in a shop, if you've gone to the shops to buy something, even if you don't know, know their name, just say, my holiness blesses you. This is a really powerful, it, it's a, just a powerful term that reminds you that I am holy. My holiness blesses the world. It blesses you. It blesses everything and everyone. My holiness blesses. So I'm reminding myself that I am holy. It is these lessons work to so many different levels of our mind to heal it, of the beliefs, separation and sin, guilt, the silly ego beliefs. So this works, this is just another tool in the belt. You know, it's alongside the Christ blessing. It's just another little, there's so many little avenues and offshoots of this Christ blessing. So lovely. So this is how, you know, we've, we've gone through today of all the forgiveness to destroy. So really I'm saying you might like to look at forgiveness to destroy is if I forgive this way, I destroy my peace. <laughs> I'm destroying my peace if I use this. So true forgiveness is this, I'm blessing you. I bless you with my holiness. It's not arrogance to say this to yourself because he wants it. That's what he did. He blessed everyone with his holiness. His whole mind, his, the Christ mind that's one with God, blesses. And that's he heals us through his mind. And he's asking us to raise up and bless everyone with our Christ mind. And this is true humility. So thank you. Let us maybe unmute ourselves now. And... 